Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing yet another edition of Weekly Wishlist or Washout. If you're new to the channel, or if you haven't seen this series before, what I do is once a week, every Wednesday, go through all of the new beauty releases that I see on Instagram, and I decide if I'm going to be adding anything to my wishlist or if I think everything's a total washout. I have a whole playlist of all of my weekly wishlists or washouts spanning just over a year now, so if you want to just binge watch all of them, I'll throw that playlist up in the cards because it's actually, I love going through them every now and then just to see A, my hair transformation because you can clearly see it there, and B, just how many new products have come out and just honestly like the scope of what has come out and what I've eventually gone on to make videos about and so on and so forth. Anyway, the playlist is there if you want to check it out. So I saw quite a few interesting things and some mm, things this week. So let's jump straight into trend mood. And I think where I left off is this product from The Ordinary. So The Ordinary is coming out with more skincare and it looks like they're coming out with a cleanser. Personally, my favorite cleanser is the CeraVe like hydrating cleanser for combo skin. That has worked the best out of all the expensive, affordable washes, skincare, God, can I speak, out of all of the face washes that I've ever tried. And I'm a bit hesitant to like step outside of that because I know it works so well for my skin. But I really do enjoy products from The Ordinary and I would be interested in trying this. But the bottle looks kind of small. I tend to buy my affordable face wash in like a jumbo size and I don't know how much this is yet. I don't think there's a price yet, but the bottle looks the same as like their other serums and I, I, honestly, if it was a face wash, I would want to see like a bigger bottle because you could go through this kind of quickly if you're using it every morning and every night. So Morphe came out with another 35 blah 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 palette. This is the Bronze Goals Artistry 35G palette. Eh. Meh. It's been a while since I've actually been interested in like a Morphe palette. I think the last one that really got me that I almost bought but didn't was like that 39A palette and only because I saw the Taylor use it and she did like a gorgeous look with it and I kind of wanted it. Glad I didn't buy it because that palette was like huge <laughs> and not a lot of people ended up like using it long term. So I'm glad I didn't go for that one. Uh, I think I'm over these gigantic palettes. I think I'm definitely more into like my sweet spot for a palette is between 12 and like 19 pans. Like that's where I'll stay <laughs> and I think I'm definitely more into like a more curated palette as opposed to like these big throw everything the kitchen sink in palettes not to say that these aren't good for certain things like if you're new to makeup or if you really want to build your collection these big palettes are a good way to bring different shades into your collection but they're big and they're a bit difficult to use um even if you're just using them for yourself not to mention putting this like in a kit and trying to use this but uh, is anyone else, does anyone else feel like they've kind of like outgrown Morphe? I mean, that's it might be a bad thing to say, but I, f I definitely feel like I'm no longer the target demographic of Morphe, so I can't really fault them for these kind of things. Doesn't mean I'm gonna buy anything though. So Ciate is now coming out with a collab with Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> Okay, the eyeshadow palette looks really boring. It looks like there is a highlighter and a lipstick. I don't even really like the packaging. I think the packaging is kind of blah, so. Uh, yeah, no. So I don't know how new this is, but it's definitely new to me. Maybelline came out with a new Dream Urban Cover Foundation, which Okay, uh, so it's supposed to be a full coverage, protective makeup. It gives you flawless coverage plus city protection and SPF 50. Um, enhanced or enriched with antioxidants such as vitamin E, vitamin B3, and blah, blah, blah. So it's supposed to come in 20 shades. It looks like an eh shade range. It definitely tends to lean more medium. 
So it's not, okay, so it's definitely new. It's not going to be available until April or May. Mm, I might try this out. I mean, honestly, if I could find it in store, I'm not going to try to shade match myself online because Jesus Christ, that's like one of the most difficult things for me to do. But if I could find this in a store, I would be willing to try it out for you guys. I do live right outside of New York City, so uh, I do commute that way. I do, I guess, live in the urban environment they're trying to do. So I'd be willing to do um, a review on this for you guys. So let me know down below if you guys actually kind of want to see a review on that foundation along with like my full commute to work and just kind of how I feel about it. Um, especially when it comes to the summer because this, uh, commuting in the summer on all these trains just outside of New York City is, uh, fun. <laughs> so BH Cosmetics came out with a new collab, which I feel is odd because didn't they like just come out with a collab? I don't know. So this collab is the BH Cosmetics slash Daisy Marquez palette. And I gotta say the packaging is adorable. And I do think she went for a nice range of shades, but for the most part, you're looking at some warm tones. It looks like a mixture of like a deep ABH palette and like the ColourPop Yes Please palette. Like I can see like ColourPop with Yes Please like on the one side of the palette and then the other side of the palette just looks like some kind of toned down jewel tones. Kind of like an e.l.f. palette. I gotta say, I love that the packaging is so unique. Like you can take the cover off and then put it in and it turns into like a little vanity with a mirror. That's adorable as all hell. I, I was tempted by that. <laughs> But looking at the shades and looking at how bulky it is otherwise, I don't think this is for me. I'm not going to go and pick it up, but I do like that it's different. Also, I'm really sorry. I've never watched Daisy Marquez. I really don't know. Is she a beauty channel? I'm so sorry. I, I don't know. I should probably do some more research, huh? Does she have a YouTube channel? She doesn't link it. All she links now is her palette, so... I don't think I talked about this along with the ABH Riviera palette, but within that collection, they actually have a whole collection for summer. They have a dewy set setting spray, and I'm actually kind of interested. Correct me if I'm wrong, but has ABH ever come out with a setting spray? Because I've personally not been aware of any. So I'd be willing to try that out. I mean, I gotta see how much the price is. Let's see. Okay, so it's 20. Oh, wait a minute. I'm gonna, I'm gonna backtrack. It's $26, but it's flavored coconut and vanilla. I don't like coconut. I mean, realistic coconut. So I, I would have to like smell this in store because if it's too realistic, I'm not going to be able to use it. Uh, on top of that, they're coming out with some loose highlighters, which I think is great for the brand. I don't think they have any loose highlighters considering they're known for all of their glow kits. But I'm not a huge fan of loose highlighters, so I'm going to keep my distance. It looks like Charlotte Tilbury just dropped some new products on Sephora and it looks like some like lip glosses. Um, yeah, Latex Love Liquid Lipstick Long Lasting Lip Gloss. Eh, I don't think I'll pick that up. Also, this eyeshadow palette just dropped. This eyeshadow palette is $65. And the swatches don't even look that good. And what is that packaging? Oh, Meh. Cover FX is coming out with some new booster drops. And I, I th well, A, I think they're kind of going overboard with their drop thing. And B, I think it's kind of ridiculous to charge $45 for a bottle of drops. That, okay, so a bottle of additive drops that doesn't include coverage, like I can kind of get behind their pigment drops because you're supposed to be able to add those to like a moisturizer and make a foundation or add those to other foundations and really get like your perfect match. These are designed as additives that you need to already have either a full moisturizer or a full foundation with and they don't add anything other than maybe brightening it a little bit making it a little bit more matte maybe adding just spf 30 like if i want spf 30 i'm gonna make sure my moisturizer has that i mean i'm not willing to drop almost 50 dollars just to add spf 30 to a product that i already own like 
$50 can get you a really nice moisturizer with SPF. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stay far away from these. I think they're incredibly overpriced for what you're getting and uh, yeah. Kylie Cosmetics is coming out with new setting powders and I have to say I'm intrigued. One of like the biggest surprises of 2018 was realizing how much I loved the Kylie concealer. I've panned two of them already. Spoiler alert for one of the product pans where that one was included, I panned the entire thing. So I am looking into picking up another one because <laughs> I love the formula so much. And if I do, I'll probably pick up one of the setting powders because I'm very curious. I only use loose setting powder really under my eyes or to set like my nose if it gets a little bit too oily. But I tend to focus it under my eyes and I would be so curious to see if I like this loose powder as much as I like the concealer because the concealer is like one of my favorites. Am I the only one that think that NARS comes out with like these collections and collabs and they kind of look the exact same except like they change the packaging? Like look at this eyeshadow palette, it's... Yeah, meh. Yeah. And then you've got lipsticks and... okay. Nope, I thought it was black. I was kind of interested. If that was a black lipstick, I would have picked it up. I'm still collecting black lipsticks for volume two of my black lipstick video because I did a, I did a hell of a lot better than I thought it would. It's like one of my top v, like videos of all time. So I am looking into more black lipsticks for that video and I thought this was black, but it's not. It's actually like a really, really deep burgundy. So I was teased. And while I have to say the packaging on these is gorgeous, once you look at the actual products, it's just... Yeah. And I forgot to mention this. This is actually a collab with Connor Tingley, who is an artist. Looking at the Instagram right now, it's his work is actually fairly gorgeous. A rising LA-based artist who specializes in abstract drawings and life-size oil paintings. I have to say, he only has 5,000, I mean only, 5,000 followers on Instagram. I love that they're collabing with someone who's, like they said themselves, a rising artist. I really do appreciate that. Um, I do love that they featured his artwork on the packaging. I just kind of wish that the products themselves are more interesting because I, I'm fighting against wanting to support this artist against buying products I know I'm not going to use, right? But you know what? I just followed him on Instagram, so I'm going to do my best to support him and what he does outside of the club. So e.l.f. Cosmetics just came out with a collection collab with Jay Kissa, and I've seen like one or two of her videos. I think the one I was really into was like the one she did with her dog, like the dog picks my makeup. I think that's the first one I saw. And that's what inspired me to do the my dog picks my makeup video, which if you haven't seen it, Rex is in it and it's adorable. So I'll throw it up in the cards. But I'm just a little disappointed that the palette that they did is in this packaging and I've tried out palettes in this formula slash packaging. It was the collab with Christian Siriano and it wasn't good. There was hardly any pigment. I like almost immediately decluttered that palette. So while it's very colorful and very nice and, and uh, I gotta kind of doubt the photo that she posted with the palette because I honestly don't know if that pigment's there because I've tried several elf palettes really the only eyeshadow palettes I really like are those like mad for matte line palettes that come in those 10 pans there are a couple that aren't mad for matte like the rose gold one was really nice but they all come in that same 10 pan kind of packaging right the ones that I've tried in this type of packaging have all been kind of really bad so my experience with that is gonna really push me to not pick this up especially because I can't see it in store now elf just closed all of their physical stores and I actually had quite a few close to me I'm in New Jersey we're close to the city there were a bunch in our malls and I used to love going into the stores to see the actual products as so you could swatch them you could see them you could buy them and they're all closing so I think a combination of that happening and me not being able to see them in store and see it before I buy it I'm gonna avoid this. I know everyone's been pushing for Jay Kissa and like her having a great collab and I'm very proud of her. I'm really happy for her with this collab, but unfortunately it's not something that I can really jump into. Farsali is 
coming out with a new rose gold skin mist. So, oh, it's $39. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> it's a four in one wonder for the skin infused with rose hip seed oil and 24 gold flakes. It instantly adds a burst of hydration to the skin. Oh, get out of here. No, I've tried some of the Farsali like drops and they were horrible on my skin. They didn't work as primers. They didn't work as skincare. They didn't work as anything. I tried panning one in one of my first project pans and it went horribly because I hated it. <laughs> I would not touch this with a 10 foot pole and that, oh my God, it's so expensive too. <sighs> Makes me move that shit. <laughs> So something that actually caught my eye that I don't think should catch my eye and I'm trying to actually talk myself out of this is Too Faced is coming out with a liquid liner called the Better Than Sex Liner. I've tried on multiple occasions the Better Than Sex Mascara and it's been absolute garbage. Garbage. Terrible. It's been dry. It's been flaky. I've looked horrible every time that I've worn it. It doesn't work for me unpopular opinion it may be but I cannot get it to work for me but I used to, okay so that's that's this is where I'm struggling I used to be someone who used liquid liner on the daily I would not leave my house my dorm room without a wing for years recently I'm not that person anymore I barely wear liner which for me has been fun and like different and I like the way that I look without it. I like the way I look with it too, but it's not something I need to have anymore, right? But part of me still has that draw towards like a nice liquid pen black liner because that's basically where I started with makeup. The first thing that got me into makeup at all was liquid liner and a wing. So I'm a bit curious and a bit, I, I want to try this. I want to try this. I know it's probably going to be overpriced like that mascara, but I have to try it. I have to try it. That's the one thing. I'm going to try this just to see how it is, right? See if it lives up to the hype. See if I don't like it as much as I don't like the mascara. I don't know if I could do a whole video on that. Let me know if you guys do want to see a whole video on that. It'd be kind of silly, but I could do that. So to finish this video off, let's just go through the silent round of brands that are just meh, that are coming out with new things. So that is it for this week, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, let me know what you thought of these products down below and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye!